Checking emails doesn't have to be dreadful. In this video, I'll be sharing five signs it might be time for you to switch to superhuman and potentially say goodbye to Gmail or Outlook. But we don't wanna lead you in the wrong direction, so stay tuned until the end of this video where we'll share three scenarios where switching to Superhuman won't actually fix your email problems. Okay, so first up, what is Superhuman? Superhuman is an app that is designed to reduce the fatigue when it comes to checking your email. It's a faster email experience, and some might even say that it makes checking your emails more enjoyable. Superhuman has a beautiful minimal design. It's super fast when it loads and also has a ton of helpful keyboard shortcuts, which I'll show you in just a minute it that help gamify checking email a little bit and also make it more fun. When Alex, my now husband and business partner, first introduced me to Superhuman, I told him that there was no way that I'd be willing to pay for email. So what he said was, give it a shot for one month, and if you don't like it, then I will personally refund you your first month. And since then, he hasn't had to refund me because it's been four years since I've been using Superhuman. He was right, I totally loved it. After using Superhuman, I don't think I can ever go back to using regular Gmail. So here are five signs that it might be time for you to switch as well, and if you use our affiliate link in the description below, you'll get the same deal that Alex got me, which is your first 30 days for free. Sign number one that you are ready to switch off of Gmail or Outlook is that you absolutely hate and dread checking your emails. You feel like checking your emails is a dreadful, overwhelming task, your inbox is cluttered, and you feel like there are just dozens of messages vying for your attention all at once. It's not that you don't want to respond to people, you actually do, you just never really know what's actually important or not. Superhuman helps reduce this cognitive overload. For example, they have a feature called split inboxes that allows you to group together similar types of emails so you can triage through them quickly and it decreases the chances of you getting distracted by that tempting newsletter that you might have gotten. I mean, it happens to the best of us. So let's go through some inbox splits that we use. We have an inbox split for important emails. So these are one-on-one -on -one emails from humans, aka a person that's writing to you and is likely requiring and waiting a response of some kind. Another split that we use is for calendar notifications. Think meeting invites, scheduler bookings, and changes to existing events. I mean, how often have you been waiting on a call only to have realized that the person had written you to let you know that they won't be able to make it and they need to reschedule, but it was buried in with all of your other emails. We have another inbox split for support tickets, and this is a split inbox for support requests that we've written out to other companies. And the reason we split this out is because it often requires troubleshooting, which is time consuming and a rabbit hole on its own. So having that mixed in with other emails is a surefire way to sidetrack you for hours. And another inbox split that we've seen pop up quite a bit is called team blocking. And this is especially helpful if you're a higher up at a company and it might be as simple as all your emails from your team members or any emails that you've individually labeled as blocking the team from getting their work done and moving things forward. We separate all of our newsletters for obvious reasons. So once you've set up inbox splits, emails automatically group to these different segments making your attention more focused on the area that is actually more important. Another cool thing about inbox splits is that you can use them as a short-term solution to help you triage through a certain type of email more quickly. Like for example, we are looking for a video editor, so we posted this on a couple job boards and we got tens and tens of applications flooding our inbox. So we quickly built out a split for video editor applications and this just helped segment all those applications in one place for when we were mentally in a place to look at them. Believe it or not, the inbox split feature, along with a couple others that I'll mention in this video, might actually get you to start enjoying to check your email. So let's keep going. Sign number two that it is time to switch off of Gmail or Outlook is if you feel frustrated that they are slow and clunky. This was actually one of my main frustrations with Gmail. While it might not sound like much, you know those three to five seconds that it takes Gmail to open up and load? Well, with Superhuman, you don't have that. You can just pop right into your inbox. If you want to compose an email, you hit C on your keyboard and voila, you're in compose mode. 
I cannot tell you the number of times that I went in to open up Gmail, saw that it was taking a while to load, went to do something else. And before I knew it, I completely lost the train of thought of what I was trying to do. Not to mention all the colors and the sidebars and the chats that are vying for your attention when you pop into Gmail. It is basically designed to get you to be sidetracked. Gmail and Outlook were not tools that were built for focus. They were built initially as an email client and then different product teams expanded on with additional features like chat, for example. So if you're getting distracted in Gmail or Outlook, it's not just you, it's almost by design. One of my favorite ways to use Superhuman is in the mornings on my phone before I've even got into my desktop. I often fly through my different inbox splits, seeing what's important and snoozing messages that are meant for the desktop to reappear in my inbox in the desktop. Yes, there's a feature for that or marking some messages as done or just deleting what's not relevant. So on the Superhuman app, you can actually customize your most frequently used actions. So for me, it's archive and delete. So I can either swipe to delete or swipe to archive a message super quickly. Sign number three is that you enjoy quality software with thoughtful functionality and beautiful design. Superhuman makes email more enjoyable because they put a lot of thought in their keyboard shortcuts and their command bar that adds a level of game gamification almost to your email, but it also makes it more enjoyable. For example, on the desktop app, you can triage your emails super fast. Tap E to archive an email, tap C to compose an email, command enter to send, escape to exit, tap L to add a label. Want to respond in line to specific parts of the email? Simply highlight a paragraph or any number of words with your mouse before pressing enter. And just like that, the highlighted text appears in quotes, slightly grayed out for you to respond specifically to that part of the email. And I will tell you, people will love you when using this feature. Another goodie that I can't live without is hitting H to snooze an email. When you hit H, you can snooze for later and you can write in natural language, like for example, in two weeks or even next Thursday at 3 p.m. in Australia. And it'll do all that awful time conversion for you. And it makes snoozing emails for the perfect time totally frictionless. And you can even ask Superhuman to resurface the email only if there's no reply or if you want it to bring it back regardless. So a lot of people, myself included, will also rely on superhuman a little bit when it comes to tasks, because if you need to get something done next week, you can just say snooze till Wednesday at 12 next week, and it will reappear in your inbox at that time, and then you can take action on it then. So for example, let's take the snooze functionality in Gmail. Even with keyboard shortcuts enabled, the entire experience, well, it requires a lot of mouse usage. You either pick a predefined time to snooze, or if you wanna select your own date, then there are several clicks and an unstructured time input field involved. On top of that, if you wanna change the time zone, well, now you're just stuck doing that time conversion in another tab. Something newer to Superhuman is their AI feature. For example, their AI feature can summarize a thread, which is helpful if you're just trying to get the gist of something, or if you prefer to use AI to help you write your emails more quickly, it will do that as well. So for example, you can write a quick message with the gist of what you're trying to say and AI will generate a message for you and you can either accept it or you can ask it to shorten it or lengthen it or even rewrite in your voice, which it learns from your other emails. I personally have been playing with this lately and I really love it, especially if I don't really know exactly what I'm trying to say and I wanna just pop in a quick sentence with my gist and then it gives me a perfectly formatted email to get the ball rolling that I can build upon. Sign number four is that you value a clean, organized inbox. When your inbox is cleared, you feel more organized and it frees up mental headspace and also reduces cognitive overload for you. So while you still need to be checking your emails, of course, with Superhuman, all the features that I mentioned make it a little bit more delightful and actually helps you get to inbox zero more often. On top of that, they have a slight level of gamification and streaks built in every time you hit inbox zero for the day or the week. Prior to Superhuman, the truth is I hardly hit inbox zero just because I was so used to my inbox always being cluttered. While now with using Superhuman, I hit it honestly almost every day or every other day. That's me. Alex doesn't hit inbox zero all the time though. 
you know, when I had my onboarding call with the superhuman specialist, I hit command A on my keyboard to select all my old emails and then I archive them. And what that meant was that I started with a fresh slate when I started using superhuman and now I just maintained that clean slate. So whether I snooze an email for later or I respond to it or I archive it, I always make sure that there's some kind of action that's taken so my inbox is clear and I don't have that fatigue of consistently rereading the same emails over and over. Sign number five and the final sign is that you are willing to pay for things that will save you time and also bring you more enjoyment. While most people would relate to the sentiment that I would never pay for email, I get that because I was in that camp as well. But it's one of those tools that once you actually try it and you see how your interaction with email changes, that's when you really can define if it's for you or not. I went from dreading to check my emails to actually enjoying my experience with email. And that really only came when I actually experienced the tool for about a month to realize the impact that it had on my life in terms of time savings and just day-to-day -day enjoyment. So honestly, if you're one of those people that likes the nice things in life and you like to get yourself a little bit of a gift now and then, I will encourage you to go give Superhuman a shot. Use our link down in the description and you'll get one month entirely free. And from there, you can really decide for you if you want to go back to the old way or stick with the new way. The truth of the matter is that most Superhuman users, myself included, say that they can't go back to using Gmail or Outlook after using superhuman. Okay, so now let's talk about where superhuman won't fix your email problems. The first area that superhuman won't fix your problems is if your team needs to collaborate on emails and you find yourselves drafting emails within your email tool, and then you're sending each other drafts of what you're going to say through other mediums like Slack or other emails or docs. In this case, what you need to be looking at is a shared inbox and using a proper help desk tool, something like Help Scout. A shared inbox allows you to easily collaborate with other team members on the same email. For example, Alex and myself, we both use Superhuman for our work email, but then we have a help desk where we have our support tickets go in and our sales requests because those types of emails normally require collaboration. So that's where a shared inbox comes in really handy. If you want more of our thoughts on which help desk you should use, then check the link in the description for a bit more info on that. The second area that Superhuman won't solve your email problems is if you are a business owner and your inbox is overflowing with messages from your customers or sales requests. If you are a growing business and you are a business owner, you need to be aware of where you should draw the line between giving customers your personal email versus a support at your company.com email. Your personal inbox should be reserved for emails that are meant for you specifically, while your support email address should be for support tickets that your team can answer as well. The more that you rope your personal inbox into your business, the more trouble you're going to have delegating and scaling. So the way you want to handle that is, of course, you want to announce to all of your customers that you now have the support email address, and then you want to stop responding from your personal email. What you want to do is you'll forward their email to the support inbox, and you'll only answer answer from there. And you want to also let them know that they're going to get a faster response and a better experience with your company if they write into support as that inbox is more closely monitored. What you don't want to do is respond more quickly from your personal email as the founder or the business owner, because that will build a really bad habit where people are emailing you expecting a faster response. So you're trying to build new habits up in your customers. So remember, it's going to be a lot of repetition and guidance, but you will get there. Now, if you're an individual and you're thinking, look, having a help desk just sounds like way too much for me. That's fine. What we'd recommend is still setting up that second email address, support at your company.com. And then you can add that as a different account in Superhuman. So now you still have that segmentation. And then when you're ready to scale down the road, you can move that over to your help desk. Third area where Superhuman will not solve your email problems is if you are super reliant on certain email extensions as a part of your workflow. For example, Sierra CRMs like Folk and Copper both have email extensions that allow you to add contacts or view CRM data. So if you're super reliant on those, they're not going to work with Superhuman. So you really want to consider the trade-off. And while Superhuman just launched an integration with Salesforce, we're not sure that they're going to move in to support other CRM extensions. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so now that you're switching to a more 
thoughtful and beautifully designed email tool, maybe you want to consider a more thoughtful browser as well. And if you do, check out our best browser video comparison right here, where we'll talk about our favorite browser. It's called Arc, and that's completely free. If you found this video helpful, it would mean a lot to us if you would give it a like and if you would subscribe to our channel. And if you have any more questions about Superhuman, leave them down in the comments below and let's continue this conversation. Thank you for your time and attention, and we'll see you in the next video.